There is a cycle that creative medias go through, but how do YouTube and I fit into this cycle? Well, I have a theory. As I said, there seems to be this cycle that creative medias go through. At first, it's niche, meaning it's only enjoyed by the select few it's targeted to. Then, as it becomes bigger and more popular, that niche we once had becomes enjoyed by the masses. Now, as a creative form of media, a new niche forms underneath it. One that seems to be teeming with creativity the mainstream has long forgotten. But it always seems that eventually this new niche comes on par with the masses. Confused? Well, let's look at gaming, which is a great and recent example of this. When video games first came into popularity in the 70s and 80s, they were not played by the masses. They were played by people we would associate with words like geek and nerd. And of course these social groups of people are still very closely related to gaming, but as time went on through the 90s and 2000s, games like Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto gained a mature audience. And then Nintendo of the Wii created a whole new genre of gamers. Casual gamers. And since then, gaming really hasn't been the same. I'm sure you've seen at least one video of old grannies playing Wii Sports. As gaming became more and more mainstream, the eventual indie gaming scene came into existence. And one game from this scene comes to mind. Minecraft. Perhaps you've heard of it. To start with, Minecraft was nothing more than an indie game played by only niches of people on their computers. But thanks to YouTubers and the game becoming more accessible by being ported to consoles, Minecraft's popularity, much like the blocky structures in the game, just grew. It is now the best-selling PC game of all time, and the company who made it was sold to Microsoft for $2.5 billion. Yet there are still people who would call Minecraft an indie game. Is it though? Or is indie just the new popular? As I said, this cycle is shared with other forms of media. Just think about how cinema began as something only enjoyed in small circles of travelling shows, to where it is now. Music comes to mind too. Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift are two of the biggest artists at the moment, and they have both been labelled indie at least once. This idea of something being indie I feel did originally come from music, where it meant something being independently created without the backing of a large company. This term of being indie has since integrated into other forms of media like games and movies and has now become more of a genre than a way in which the media is produced. Even YouTube falls into this cycle. Think about where YouTubers began behind their webcams in 2007 to where YouTubers are now, making appearances on shows as big as South Park. It's hit the mainstream, but has that new niche begun yet? Well, I don't think so. Remember I said that new niche is usually more creative because the mainstream has lost that? Well, for now, mainstream YouTube still seems to be fairly creative. And I hope it stays that way. Something I do find interesting is how some of the biggest YouTubers aren't particularly groundbreaking. They were just the first to do it, which in its own way is just as groundbreaking, if not even more so. What this does mean though is you can't just film yourself on a webcam and expect to be famous overnight. It just doesn't work like that anymore. For a long time now I've wanted to YouTube, but I've always been worried I never really fitted the YouTube mould. But then I realised, there is no YouTube mould. Yes. I know I'm not the most attractive guy. Yes, I know I have this dopey voice that makes me sound like a cartoon dog. Yes, I know I have the social skills of a balloon when I'm in front of a camera. And yes, I know how ridiculously sweaty I'm getting. Seriously, jacket was a bad choice. Yet, the beautiful thing about the internet is, that doesn't really matter. There is no audition for YouTube. Getting seen doesn't depend on things like who you know or what connections you have. This is where people come from all across the world to be entertained, educated, or just watch a man spout rubbish. Seriously? You're still here? Well, if you are still here, I suppose I should introduce myself. This is an introduction video after all. Hi there, I'm Patrick, and welcome to Useless Theory. But what exactly is Useless Theory? Well, it's my thoughts, my ideas, my theories. From pop culture, to politics, and anything in between. The most important thing about these videos is I want them to make you think. Things you never thought about before, about the other side of the coin. I want to take all the weird things that come into my head and put them into yours. Metaphorically speaking, not literally. That would be disgusting. There is, however, one thing I won't be doing in these videos. Arguing. As I said, most things in my videos will usually just be a theory. A game fear. No. Seriously though, they're my ideas I'm giving to you to give back to me. If 
if you love or hate them, then please tell me. I want to know. That's all for me. But what about you guys? Do you believe in this cycle? Do you think YouTubers hit the mainstream too hard? Are you willing to accept me into your online lives? Leave your answers or just about anything else you have to say down below. This channel is just as much yours as it is mine. Also, it would be fantastic if you could leave a like or a comment, share the video or subscribe to the channel. It would really help me get this dream of mine off the ground. That's all for now, Internauts, but always remember to stay open. Thank you.